Hi, I'm Jason Inman. And I'm Asha Victoria Robinson. And we are here to give you some tips on how to create your own comic book. Now, this question came to us from one of our lovely patrons over at patreon.com. The name, uh, who's the name of this lovely drama? This question comes from Nick Rotundo. Well, Nick, thank you so much lovely for the question. Human. You know, it's great that we're here to answer that because we are comic book writers. Hey. We're Ringo nominated comic writers. We're Eisner nominated. Co winning. And yeah. winning with love is love. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know exactly how that works. Uh, but, anyways, um, it's great that this question comes up because. Next Tuesday, 121-20, January 21st, uh, we are launching another Kickstarter for our sequel to our all-ages adventure, Jupiter Jet. Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio. Radio. You can go check that out over jupiterjetcomic.com over on Kickstarter. You can, of course, follow us on Twitter, at jupiterjetcomic on Twitter. Uh, you can look at some of the amazing art that's happening right here. It is a sequel to Jupiter Jet Volume 1. Basically, Jupiter Jet has gone to space and is chasing a mysterious person named the Black Flyer. Who is that person? We have to come over and support the comic book over at jupiterjetcomic.com. So... Please hope you do. Please. We can't make the comic book without your support. That's right. And then we can't tell you how to create your own. So Nick wants to know tips for creating your own comic book. Well, Nick, I suggest when you go and support the Kickstarter that you get a script review Holy from cow. one of the amazing people who's helping us over there. There are some script reviews there over there. There are, and there's yeah. portfolio mm -hmm. reviews. Um, the best thing that you can do, actually do, which is something that Nick's done, is you can reach out to people yeah. who might know a little bit more about you. So you've taken the right step. Uh, my first piece of advice is that you should write an outline because I know that's a very basic piece of advice, but I also know because I know myself, there's a bunch of great people, great creative minds out there who are watching this video who want to do it by the seat of your pants. And friends, I can't tell you enough what a bad idea that is because story structure, whether you're doing one of these or you're doing a less linear version of storytelling, lives or dies on payoffs and how you pace things. And with comic books especially, pacing is important. So please, for the love of God, do an outline. Stick to your outline. Jason, what's some of your tips? I mean, you have more, right? That was only one. Yeah, but we're going to alternate. Okay. This All is right. banter. <laughs> <laughs> um, my very first tip actually should happen way before your outline <laughs> happens. Uh, my very first tip is decide if it actually is a comic book. What do you mean by that? Well, you see, Ashley, there are different uh, mediums out uh -huh. there in terms of art, like watercolor and oils and uh, paper mache. Um, just like stories should be told in the perfect medium. Uh, some stories are not comic books. Some stories are films. Some stories are plays. Some stories, some stories are novels. Some stories are novels. Some stories are documentaries. Uh, decide if your story can only be told in comic books. Um, if your comic book is basically a piece where two people sit in a diner for 30 pages, then perhaps you should make a short film. Or a play. Or a play. Honestly, that'd be a great um, one act. You know, because then I think your art, your artist might get pretty mad of drawing two people just sitting at a table. Now, I know many of you out there, and I love, I'm looking forward to the YouTube comments of being like, I've read plenty of comic books like that. You don't know what you're talking about, you hack. Uh, well, good for you, but I... Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. We've written comic books. We know what we're talking about, so... <laughs> Uh, anyways, um, you know, just decide, like, because I think if, if your story can work for in another medium, then go make it in that medium and maybe brainstorm some other ideas for comic books. And then once you have that idea, uh, like Nick did, yeah, you know, comic book creators are generally a very friendly and a very welcoming industry. And so I would reach out to people most of the time, unless they're super busy or super famous. Um, they're going to respond. They will answer you. Now, Kevin Smith is a busy man. If you email Kevin Smith, he's probably never going to respond because he gets a million emails a day. But if you email, say, somebody like Greg Pak or Charles Soule or uh, Colin Bunn, you know, I'm not saying that I don't think any of those gentlemen are on the same level as Kevin Smith. I think they are. Mm -hmm. I think they very much are. But they're lesser known. They're not as famous as movie star Kevin Smith. They might actually answer your questions. Um, I got to know uh, Colin Bunn, the writer of one of my favorite comic books of all time, The Six Gun, because I emailed him and I asked him a couple of questions before we started our whole journey at comic books and mm -hmm. he answered. He, if you if you send a very normal and nice email, they will generally ask your questions. I think that's a or great... Or answer your questions, excuse me. I think that's a great piece of advice for all steps because comics 
like most art forms, but comics is very collaborative because it is mm-hmm. at the very least a collaboration between an artist and a writer, unless you are a Jeff Lemire and you're like a whiz kid who's doing all of it yourself. Yeah. Um, so you really have to learn how to work with other people, which is not to say you're not going to come into conflict, but it's very much a pick your battles. And if you approach things with friendly professionalism, you I think you'll be surprised who is willing to mm-hmm. help, whether it's answering your questions, collaborating with you on a project, sharing your Kickstarter, or buying your book. Yeah. Ashley, do you have, uh, what other tips do you have? I would say that if you think that your story belongs to a particular genre, uh, familiarize yourself with it. If you want to write a Western, watch a lot of Westerns, read a lot of Westerns, figure out what about it speaks to you, but also make sure that you're not writing something that's already been done. Now, there's only really seven archetypal stories, but sometimes you get on a tear and you get down the weeds and then you've written Terminator 2 and you have to backward engineer it so that it's more unique and more special and it's going to help you stand out in a crowd. Don't just do your version of Batman because Batman already exists. And you don't own Batman. You don't. you can never publish that story. Don't. And nobody at DC can read that story. So figure out what about you and what about this story is special and do your research because the more you know, the more well-equipped you are to make intelligent, thoughtful, and smart choices for the character. And that way when people read your comic for the first time, it doesn't just seem like every other comic on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, My other biggest piece of advice is to start small. Mm. Start very small. Ashley and myself, when we started writing comic books, we started doing six-page and four-page stories in anthologies. And sometimes one-page stories. And sometimes one-page stories. <laughs> yeah. It helps you learn the medium. Because as much as you think you might have read a million comic books, I've read a million comic books too, mm-hmm. you might think you know the medium. Well, you don't really know it until you create it. And some things that you might think work won't work when you're actually writing or drawing. Also, that allows you to actually reach out to some of your other collaborators, whether it's letterer or the inker or the colorist or the uh, penciler. And, you know, find people that you like to work with. My biggest piece of advice would be don't immediately send an email to Jim Lee asking him to draw your comic book. Go find somebody about at your same, I would say, skill level. Mm -hmm. On the internet, Twitter is a great place. DeviantArt is a great place to find. Instagram is a great place to find artists. And reach out to artists and ask them if they'd be willing to collaborate on a six-page or a four-page or an eight-page. It it is a lot easier to do a story that's that small. Uh, A lot of big mistake a lot of first-time comic writers make, especially the ones that I'll talk to, is they'll say like, "Oh, this is issue one of an eighty-page epic." Or an eighty issue epic, and you're like, no, no, nobody's gonna, nobody cares, man. I'm you, sorry, you, like, you it's too keep, much. Keep that for a later time. Yeah. Let that stew mm. for a later time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's a really good mm-hmm. uh, recommendation. Like, start small because the more you do it, you're gonna learn how to look at things like lettering and layout, and you're just gonna become smarter about mm-hmm. the medium. Um, And then I would also say that once you have created your own comic book, whether that's a webtoon, whether that's something you're doing in your Instagram stories, whether that's self-published, whether that's with the publisher or whatever, uh, remember that your most valued outcome is to have somebody read your comics. Yep. So to finish it. Don't be afraid to give people copies, comp copies to read, to give people press copies to read, donate to libraries, donate to schools. Ultimately, you want people to engage with your media. So if you do something good and you give people access to it, I'm not saying you have to give it away for free. By all means, sell a copy of your book and sell it to everyone. But be really careful with your price point on it because without an audience, then you're just making comics alone in your room. And we've all been there. Mm -hmm. And no one wanted to read those comics for a reason. Also, my biggest piece of advice for all of this, and this is for any medium in comic books or movies or television or whatever, is... Um, to remember that it's collaborative and also to remember to be nice. Mm-hmm. We all know the asshole at work. We all do. Everybody knows that person, be it a man or a woman. There's that one person at work that nobody really wants to talk about, that criticizes everybody, and is kind of mean. You don't want to be that person on your project. So when you're, like, say you're going to a comic book convention... And you're walking down up up and down Artist Alley. And those people that are there and they have made their comic book, you know, this is it's a place you want to be, right, as a comic book creator. And you're you're putting your heart on front street. Your baby is right there for anybody to see, anybody to criticize. Don't be the person that walks up to their table and goes, Ugh, 
Your lettering could be better. Mm -hmm. Don't be that person. Because we'll remember you. Be, nobody wants to nobody wants yeah. to work with that person. Yeah. And comic books is a collaborative business. A lot of it it's like who do you know? Mm -hmm. I mean that's a real statement. Um and comic book creators and bigger people are more willing to help out your comic book, share your comic book, be friends with your comic book if you're generally not a dick. And I think I think what that kind <laughs> of uh, uh, all stems from is treat it like a job. Yes. If you expect to be treated as a professional by your consumers and by the people that are your peers or you hope are your peers, you have to be professional. That comes to collaborating. When you collaborate with someone, make them sign a contract. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're very clear about your expectations and that they've consented and have agreed to meet your deadlines and things like that. If, even if it's just you and you're making it for yourself and you're going to print it at Kinko's and hand copies out to people at San Diego Comic-Con, treat it like a job and one day it will be a job. Yeah, and I think Nick uh, Rotundo mm -hmm. uh, asking us here on Patreon.com slash Jalman through our Patreon, uh, you're on the right step, man, because you did number one, you were very nice about it, and you were cool, and that's why we wanted to answer you. Also, uh, guys, if you are interested in creating your own comic book, Ashley was right. JupiterJetComic.com will take you right to our Kickstarter for the second volume of our All Ages comic book, Jupiter Jet. The Ringo nominated Jupiter yeah. Jet. Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio. We have rewards on there. Script you can get script reviews from me and Ashley. You get and from people way better than and us. And from way people <laughs> way more professional than us, like Joseph Malozzi, the executive producer of Stargate SG1 and Dark Matter. Um, that can give you advice on your comic book script. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, come on over to Kickstarter, support us on the Kickstarter, support volume two, and get yourself some tips on creating your own comic book. So there you go. I'm Jason Inman. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. Bye-bye, super friends. <laughs>